Hey guys, this is Adam with TAT Express and today we're going to go over common issues on your after treatment system. Most of the after treatment system are designed the same way, so we're going to go over one system, but it's going to cover a lot of them. So I hope you like the video. Make sure to subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. Turn on your notification bell so you know next time we release another video. Let's get right into this. Okay guys, so after treatment systems are basically designed to cut down on nitrous oxide. The manufacturers have made different steps to cut down the nitrous oxide. We are currently sitting, most, most trucks are going to have an after treatment system with a DOC and a DPF filter. Also after that downstream is going to be a SCR system. Most of the time these systems are considered one box system, which means they're, they're boxed in together. You'll have your DPF and DOC up top and down below will be your SCR system. Um, now other systems will have separated. This particular system has a separate system. You have uh, a stack DPF system, which has your DOC and DPF filters stacked on top of each other. Uh, once the, the soot goes through that uh, chamber, it's gonna go through your SCR system. The SCR system is going to be injected here with DEF. Uh, the DEF, of course, is going to cancel out the last of the nox nitrous oxide of the system before it exi exits the exhaust. Okay, so as I mentioned, we're going to go over common issues. So the first thing I want to go over is your DEF system. So let's take a look at that. Okay guys, so as I mentioned, we're going to go over common issues on your after treatment system. The first thing we're going to cover is your DEF. Your DEF is what's injected into your SCR system, your SCR chamber, to uh, eliminate the rest of the nitrous oxide. Um, the computer reads these, the readings by nitrous oxide sensors or NEO, NOx sensors. Basically what they're measuring is PPMs. For example, if you got 100 PPMs coming into your SCR system, we are currently at a uh, requirement of more than 80% efficiency needs to be achieved. So what that means is, as I mentioned, if we have 100 PPMs going into the system, we would need at least 20 or less coming out of the system. So the computers are, simp are always monitoring these two readings to make sure we are meeting efficiencies. Now what's going to keep you from making efficiencies? Okay. One thing is contaminated DEF. If you're getting your DEF in bulk, you want to make sure that it's not diluted, okay? You want to make sure the DEF that you're putting in there is the right DEF that, to go on your system. Most of the fuel stations have the correct DEF, uh, so there's really not too much worry. Uh, when if you try to buy aftermarket DEF, um, something that's been sitting for a long time, you could have problems with that. Okay, so these particular systems, they're Oh, the older systems are designed a little bit different. They used to use air to inject the DEF into the SCR system. Now, over time, what ends up happening, of course, you get air leaks, you get valves that get clogged up, and over time, what ends up happening is you're not getting enough DEF in the SCR system to create the conversion needed for the computer to say, okay, it's good to go. So, the newer models moved over to an electric pump. Now, what that does is eliminate the truck air having to supply to the, to the actual DEF pump to go into the SCR system. Now it's just using an electric pump. Uh, the electric pump is going to, of course, do the same thing. It's going to supply DEF to your SCR system. Now, the only problems that we do see with the electric pumps is if the tr truck has been sitting for a long time, uh, DEF likes to get hard and dry up. So these particular pumps would sometimes need to be removed, cleaned, um, and then reinstalled, retest to make sure that they're making the correct pressure. Uh, here at this location, what we use is computer diagnostics to look at the pressures, make sure the pressures are reading correctly and producing enough pressure uh, on your DEF system. Uh, another thing that you want to look for is leaks in the lines. Okay, so like I mentioned, the DEF gets transferred from the pump into the SCR system. Now, sometimes these lines, over time from moving and shifting, can lose their seals. So what that ends up doing is you're losing DEF going into the SCR system. And of course, what, you, what do you get? Low inefficiency or low uh, NOx co conversion. So 
Those are one, that's one of the main problems we see is low NOx. Uh, you're going to see it in the Volvos, Detroits. Uh, as I mentioned, they, they looks like the manufacturers are making ways uh, to kind of cut out uh, so much extra parts on the system to make sure it gets delivered correctly. So uh, we're going to move back on the passenger side of the truck and go over the after treatment system. I want to point out a few sensors and some other things that we look for. So let's get right into that. Okay guys, so the first thing I want to show you here is uh, we're back on the passenger side. Okay, the DEFs that our DEF lines I were talking about, these are it, these are it then here. Um, you know, like I mentioned, another thing you want to look for, you can kind of see how this is it's not really kinked, but you want to look for any kind of kinks or any kind of any kind of tight uh, zip ties that's going to restrict any DEF flow. Um, this particular valve uh, is also cooled uh, with coolant, so you can see two coolant lines here going into the valve. Uh, this valve is what injects, as I mentioned, the DEF into the mixing chamber. Uh, this is your first NOx sensor here before the chamber. Um, we can go ahead and go. I'll, I'll show you the flow. If we go back, if we go up here, you can see the flow from the engine is up top. It's going to come in, come in here, going into your after treatment system. First, it's going to go into your D, DOC, DPF, and then go into this chamber before mixing, uh, before entering your SCR system here. Uh, DEF is injected, NOx is read before DEF injected, and you have the exit on this side, uh, NOx exit or NOx outlet reading before exiting the exhaust. So as you can see, those two sensors is what's going to be monitoring your conversion. Uh, we get a lot of low conversion faults. Um, so basically that's, that's what we'll be looking for. We're looking for leaks. Um, we're looking for correct readings on your NOx. Uh, in some cases, what can happen is here at the nozzle or here at the valve where it goes into this section of the pipe, uh, we'll get a lot of buildup over time. So what ends up happening is these systems are supposed to purge out when your truck is off so you don't have any leakage going into your mixing chamber. But over time, what ends up happening is this DEF, while entering this mixing chamber, will create just a bunch of buildup on the inside. And what that causes is it doesn't get a good spray into the system for, so it can mix it correctly. And that's going to also give us some bad readings. Okay, so the next problem that we uh, commonly see on this is not being able to make temperature. So let's look over that. Um, that's going to be the next item we go over. Let's get right into that. Okay, guys, so the next common issue that we are going to go over is the system not making temperature. What we mean by that is the truck is not making enough temperature for the filter to, to either get cleaned um, during driving or during a stationary regen. When this happens, you end up getting excessive soot in your filter, and of course, you're getting your check engine light. So all I want to do is point out what the system is and, and what we look for whenever you come in with, those, with that particular fault. What I'm going to do first is show you the injection uh, line that's going behind the turbo. Uh, you can get a line. It's going to be a steel line right here. Let me see if I can get my finger on it. This is it here. This is the steel line here. What happens after the turbo, of course, is exhaust is coming out. Uh, fuel gets injected into this line, uh, and it, into this exhaust area, and what it does is bring the temperature up uh, to create heat. And as I mentioned before in my other videos, is that heat is designed to to break up the soot that's clogged up into the ceramic filters and with the exhaust pressure, uh, push out the loose soot uh, to keep the filters clean. So what we end up hap seeing is first we'll get a system not making temperature or the system's clogged up. Um, what I'm going to point out to you is a couple of things that we look for uh, to make sure your system's making temperature. So let's get, in, let's get into that. Okay guys, as I mentioned, what we're looking for is why the system's not making heat. Now, the system is going to be monitored by a bunch of different sensors, as I mentioned before. The ECM is monitoring these, these sensors to make sure it's meeting all the specs. Okay, so what I'm going to point out to you here is below, just downstream from our injection is going to be a temp sensor. Now, this temp sensor is going to be reading the, the actual temperature going into your after treatment system. You have another sensor that's right here, right before your DPF filter. Up here is your DLC. Uh, and down below you have another sensor that's, that's checking your temperature going before your after treatment, before your actual SCR system. Another sensor that's very important here is your differential pressure sensor. Basically, as you can see, it's got a line coming in 
before your DPF filter and you got a line after your DPF filter. So basically this sensor is measuring the difference between these two, this two, these two pressures. Now what that does is once a pressure, the pressure starts become high where that means that there's a big difference between pressure going in and pressure coming out, that's letting the ECM know that, hey man, we got a clogged filter. So when we do get the faults of low, uh, uh, low temp or clogged filters, what we're coming in and we're making sure that our sensors are reading correctly we're making sure that the temp sensors are reading correctly. There's no leaks in the line. There's no leaks anywhere else. Make sure we're getting accurate readings. Um, the next thing that we'll do if we see that we're not making temperature is we're actually gonna pull the injector off the uh, back of the turbo and inspect it. Um, just as I mentioned before with the SCR system where it ends up getting built up over time, the same thing happens with the, with the uh, seventh injector as mentioned, as Volvo mentions it. Um, what happens is the carbon builds up due to not being able to burn all that fuel and that nozzle ends up getting clogged up. It's actually a service routine to be able to pull that off and clean it uh, as a service routine to keep up with your DPF system. Okay, so that's pretty much what we look for. That's the most common that we see on these systems. Um, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next section. Okay guys, so to wrap everything up, the last thing I'd like to cover and uh, another thing that we see is the lack of maintenance. These systems are very delicate as you can see, so maintaining your system, getting it checked out right away if you see any problems or any check engine lights is very important. Delaying, uh, delaying any repairs could only cost you more money and more time. Uh, it's very important to go to a shop with experience. We'll be more than happy help, to help you here at TAT Express. Uh, we use all the right equipment to troubleshoot these systems. Uh, I know that the sensors seem like a lot, but they help the technicians uh, to very kind of pinpoint the problem before removing any parts. So make sure to subscribe to us. If you're not subscribed to us yet, turn on the notification bell so you know next time we release another video, guys. So until next time, be safe. I came from the mud, desert on my